Good morning, grandkids. This is called A Work in Progress. It's the title of a new series. And uh, I jotted down my notes that I wanted to say, which I'll be reading off because I was afraid I might not remember everything. The name of this series, A Work in Progress, was suggested by one of the viewers and they also said that it should be a separate series from Granny's Bookshelf series so that it can more easily be found among all my playlists. Thank you so much for that suggestion and for the name and I agreed with you. This series is only about my own writing. I decided I wanted to make written stories out of my gameplay series see if it would get me into writing. Each series could make a short novel and each handwritten chapter is only two or three pages on both sides. In this series I will be reading my story to you. Each small chapter will only take about five minutes to read so I'll probably be reading two chapters in each episode. This first story that I'm going to write is based on my game series The Listener. Those who've watched this series will recognize where I have taken creative license and added to it and also where I've left out unnecessary stuff not interesting to read like being lost in a tunnel for half a video. For new people here, it will all be new. If we all get through this together to our mutual enjoyment, I will maybe way later write a story based on another series. This video is the introduction and the first chapter of The Listener. I hope you'll enjoy it. I had been climbing up the gradually sloping foothills toward the snow-clad peaks above, marking the border of Skyrim. Evening was approaching with a last dying glimmer of a dull orange sun, which I could just barely see behind me through the mountain pass. The gray sky above me was low and heavy with the weight of more snow waiting to fall on the land below. I was wearing leather armor with fur-lined knee-high boots and fur-lined gloves. I also had a fur cloak wrapped around me. I was warm enough, but I knew I'd be feeling the cold as I climbed on into the higher passes. Being tired and hungry, I decided to pitch my tent and make camp for the night. I gathered some stones and built a fire with some dry wood that I had managed to find under the pine trees of the forest. I made do with some dry food I had in my leather pouch. I've been hearing the mournful howl of wolves off in the distance. Hopefully, I will have meat to cook at my next campfire. I have this old book of blank pages I found somewhere and thought I'd put down a few thoughts in it as I sit here soaking up the warmth of my fire. The flickering flames making dancing figures on rocks and snow around me set my wandering thoughts into very unfamiliar territory. I started thinking about my life and the flickering swiftness of its passing. I don't have anyone, and if I was to die, who would know or care? My life would have been lit for a brief time, then flickered out just as swiftly. Nothing but ashes left behind. I'll make an attempt 
at jotting down a few words about me and about this journey that I'm on before my life flickers out, which could be sooner rather than later, especially if one of those wolves gets their jaws on me. The stars are finally showing themselves overhead. I have a lantern propped on a rock beside me, and I'm thinking about how I got here. Believe me, this is not my lifestyle and never will be. This is merely a means to an end. I had no other way to make it to the border or take this miserable life of mine out of the miserable country of my miserable birth. I leave nothing behind. I'm like a shadow passing through the land. I don't know why I'm writing these things. What is a journal if there's no one to read it? There never will be, so why bother? Actually, it's for me, I guess. It helps me, rummaging through my life, to put aside useless things like hopes and dreams. Maybe strengthening, strengthening my commitment to what I am. Yes, what I am, not who I am, because I'm no one. I'm a shadow. I listen and absorb. I'm not seen, and I'm unknown. I guess if I'm going to keep a journal, I shouldn't be quite so cryptic. Maybe at the scene of my future death, someone might pick this up and flip through the pages not because they care about the dead body, just being curious. Who I am is a female Khajiit with no name. As for what I am, I'm a cold-blooded assassin. Now the warmth of the fire and a bottle of mead has me thinking of my bedroll. Maybe I'll write more sometime sitting by another campfire. I'll tell you about my childhood and how I became this assassin. Chapter One Yes, as I said previously, I'm an assassin. That is the only thing about me that is true and sure. Here is what I learned about myself at a very early age. My mother, whomever she was, died giving birth to a four kitten litter, and of the four, I was the runt. This birth took place in a caravan traveling across country whose people mainly consumed and sold skooma. Since my father was dead or long gone, and there were no other known relatives, the caravan leader took charge and a decision was made to keep the other three kittens and raise them to specifically become skooma runners. I was unfeelingly tossed out onto the side of the road. No one had even bothered to name me. How I survived, I know not. I know that one day, a wagon came by with the children of the family running and playing alongside. One of the young girls found me among the grasses and picked me up. She kept me as a pet. One day, they approached a town where they were going to settle and the mother didn't want to fool with me anymore. The young girl had to set me down in the shrubbery and walk away. Still no name, except Kitty. And so that was how my young years passed, being tossed from one caravan or wagon to another. By the age of six or seven, I was told I was to earn my keep for however long I stayed with someone. 
doing the dirty work, whatever others didn't want to do. Still, no one bothered to name me. So I was growing up without love, with no one caring about me, and belonging to no one. I was fed when someone remembered. I slept wherever. I dressed myself in whatever someone threw away. And this was how I lived until the age of 10 seasons. But I was learning things, not by any kind of teaching, but by observation. I was listening. Sorry, I lost my place. I would stay unnoticed in shadows and nooks since no one ever noticed me anyway. So not even realizing that I was nearby, they didn't hesitate to gossip or make illicit plans or whatever. So that was how I learned. I learned what people are really like inside. People wear masks, you know. Not paper masks. Let's call it emotional masks. The outside is for loved ones, friends, neighbors to see. But behind the mask, hidden within, was their true selves. I got to know their true selves by watching and listening. Oh, listening is a powerful stuff. You can blackmail by listening. Once I was listening to a man as he told his wife he loved her, kissed her goodbye. After she walked away, he turned to his buddy and started telling him what he really thought of her, which wasn't anything repeatable. Others I've watched loving and hugging their children and then after they ran off to play, tell someone that they wished they had never been born. I actually listened to and watched as a woman was handing over coin to a man she had talked into murdering her husband. Even though she always was telling friends how much she loved him. Now, my curious reader, you may be getting a glimpse of what made me what I am. What deceit and lies, what gossip and underhanded dealings formed my emotions and beliefs about life and about my fellow travelers on this planet. As far as I'm concerned, there is no true love, no true compassion. I never saw it, never learned of it. I had none shown toward me. Therefore, it's lacking in me. I am a void, an empty, dark shell. I don't seek these things, and never will. I am unfeeling and uncaring assassin, and that I shall remain. I have called or named myself the listener, because that's what I do best, that and kill. With these things, I have carved out the path that I would take through life. So, by the age of ten seasons, I was through with it all. One night, like a shadow, I faded into the darkness, slipped away, and never looked back. And I survived. I stole, I lied, I cheated. I even accepted contracts to eliminate others. And that's how the years have passed. 
Now I'm almost at the border of a new country to try my fortune there. This cat assassin will hide in the shadows of Skyrim and continue as I am. I don't seek a new life or to make a change. Just new territory. I have heard rumors of a cult or a guild in Skyrim called the Dark Brotherhood. A bunch of cutthroat assassins. If I feel that it could be lucrative for me, I might seek them out. I thought of another guild in Skyrim called the Thieves Guild. But the profit that you get from lifting someone's money pouch or lockpicking their safe, that's small potatoes compared to what you can make fulfilling an assassin's contract. I'm all about how much coin I can gain from whatever my endeavors might be. For now, I'm going to douse the fire, turn off the lantern, and call it a night. Goodbye, grandkids. That's the end of the first episode of me reading my book, The Listener. Goodbye, grandkids.